This is the second of two lectures from chapter 12 about solutions, and this one is about the various units of concentrations that chemists use. So concentration basically tells us how much solute has been dissolved in a solvent. The four that we'll be focusing on, um, there are a lot more, is molarity, and that's by far the most important one, molality, mole fraction, and mass percentage. So we'll go over each one in a bit more detail. Here's a chart. They're all kind of in one place. This might be something you might want to print out. Um, but there are some at the bottom that are very common in the consumer world, like parts per million. Sometimes you'll see that on food items. I know that water treatment centers use parts per million um, to track pollutants. Um, and so basically, I want you to see the similarity in some of these. Um, from mole percent on down, they're very similar uh, in that they have the amount of solute on the top and the total amount of solute and solvent on the bottom. And so all of these are unitless, okay, because since they have the same units in the top and bottom, they cancel out. Um, Anytime you see percent, it means you've taken the fraction and multiplied it by 100. And the only difference between mass percent, where you multiply by 100, and parts per million, for example, is instead of multiplying by 100 parts per million, the equation has you multiply by a million. So parts per million would be the mass of the solute over the mass of the entire solution. And instead of times 100 for percent, it would be times 1 million. And that would give you what you often read on the back in containers, PPM parts per million. All right, so we're going to go um, over them one at a time. I'm going to start with molarity, again, by far the most important. The key to success in this unit and most of the ones remaining in this class are do as many calculations as possible. So it'll be especially important not only to make sure you understand mastering chemistry, but to work through the extra worksheets that I put in the content folder in class problem solving um, for any area that you think you need more practice on. The, the samples I'm going to give you here are going to be very straightforward, but as you know, I'm sure from past experience, just by rewording a problem, it can seem more difficult. So the more of these you work through, the better off you'll be. So again, look at the formula of molarity. Um, it's important to remember that the symbol representing mol molarity is a capital M. Don't get that confused with a small m, which is molality. It's a shame they made those two words sound and look so similar to each other. So molarity is moles of solute, as most of these concentrations have solute on the top. Molarity has the entire volume of the solution. What do we mean when we say solution? We mean solute plus solvent. Anytime you see solution, you've got to add both the solute and solvent together. Mole fraction as I said a minute ago, uh, any fraction has the un same units on top and bottom is unitless, okay? Anytime you see a fraction, the value should be less than or equal to 1. And mole fraction is simply the moles of your solute divided by the total moles of everything in the solution, okay? Um, you might ask, why do they have so many different... Um, concentration units. One of the reasons is molarity got to be very popular with chemists, very useful, but it turns out it can the value of it can change with temperature, and that's because it has a volume term in it, and volume can vary with temperature. So if chemists are doing an experiment at all, and they're varying the temperature all over the place, they probably don't want to use molarity. They're probably going to move to some other unit, um, like mass percent, mole fraction, or molality. All right, so here's a very simple introductory problem on molarity. A 3.75 sample of sodium chloride, that would be our solute, is dissolved in water. The total volume is 768 milliliters. What is the molarity? 
Okay. Um, if I were you, I'd try it on your own. Um, make sure, you know, see what your weak points are right now. It's the best place to learn. I will go over how to make a certain molar solution in a couple of slides. But let me just point out this point. Um, typically what chemists will do first is weigh out the mass of the solute and put it in. This is called a volumetric flask, and that's a term that you need to know. Volumetric flasks are hand-blown, very highly uh, precision made. They have this little etched line on them, um, which uh, is made to a very, very precise volume. And so you would weigh the solute in. You'd add enough solvent, in this case water, to dissolve the solute. And you wouldn't want to add water all the way to the meniscus or all the way to the etch line yet because this solute, sodium chloride, is going to take up some volume. So you want to completely dissolve it first so that it can take up the volume it needs to before you fill it. And then, of course, you'd fill it so the bottom of the meniscus lies right on that etch line. So let's look at the solution. You find moles, of course, from grams by dividing by the molar mass, in this case sodium chloride, and that gives you the moles. Then you remember the formula for molality is moles of solute over liters of the entire solution. Well, we have milliliters of the entire solution, so we need to convert that to liters. So the conversion factor from milliliters to liters, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Okay, So that would be 0.768 liters. So you would have to put it in liters. And that gives you a molar solution of 0 0.0835. Another introductory sample problem for mole fraction Mole fraction, again, is moles of solute over moles of whatever's in the solution. Typically just one solute, one solvent, but sometimes there's more than one solute. And so go ahead and try to work this one out. Put the video on pause and see if you get the right answer. So the answer of this, um, you already know the moles of solute. That goes on top, 0 0.100 moles. The moles of the solute and solvent, the entire solution, go on the bottom. So we have 0 0.100, and now we need the moles of water. How do we get that? Well, we have grams of water. So again, getting from grams to moles, divide by the molar mass of water, 5.56 moles. So that gives us 0.1 mole on top, divided by, if you add these together, 5.66 on the bottom. And that gives you a mole fraction of 0 0.018. Again, just to remind you, any type of fraction or percent are unitless. The units are the same on top and bottom and cancel. All right, so another example, this one's of mass percent, which is very similar to a fraction, except anytime you see that percent, it means you multiply by 100. Notice that in the bottom again is grams of the entire solution, which means you need to add together grams of the solute and grams of the lint. So here's the example. We have three grams of sodium chloride. This is actually the uh, same quantities we use when we are calculating mole fraction. <clears throat> and 150 grams of water and express it as mass percent. So I would recommend again, um, pausing the video, seeing if you can do it yourself. Here's the formula for mass percent. You don't really need this bottom part now, but I just think it might be helpful to you. When somebody tells you, for example, they have a 5% solution, what exactly does that mean? Percent is always out of 100. So what that means, what that means is that you have 5 grams of the solute and 100 grams of the solution. And here's how you would work that problem out. We know the mass of the solute, which is sodium chloride, is 3, 3 grams. And remember that in the equation for mass percent, the denominator is mass of the entire solution. So you have to add together mass of the solute and the solvent, which was given. They said 150 grams of water. 
So that ends up being a 2% by mass solution of sodium chloride salt water. Okay, and here's the last one that we're really going to focus on, unit of concentration, and that's molality. Molality is symbolized with a lowercase small l, m, I'm sorry, and its definition is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. You should be very familiar with the difference between molality and molarity. So what do you see is different and the same right away? They both have moles of solute in the numerator. It's the denominator that's different, and it's different in two ways. One, molality has kilograms instead of liters, okay? So it has a mass term instead of a volume term. So molality will not change with temperature. And the denominator for molality only involves the solvent. The denominator for molarity involves the entire solution. So those are two important differences. Molality is most commonly used when you do change the temperature of something so that you don't have to worry about your value of concentration changing with temperature. All right, so here's an example. The same example. It's kind of cool. Three, three grams of sodium chloride and 150 grams of water. We've calculated mole fraction and mass percent. Now let's calculate the molality of this solution. Well, molality is moles of solute on the top in the numerator over kilograms of solvent. So give it a try, see if you can get it right, and I have the answer on the next page. All right, so moles of solute, as always, find it by dividing by the molar last mass of the solute, which again is sodium chloride. We have 0.0513 moles. The only thing you have to be careful here is the de denominator is kilograms of solvent. The problem gave us grams of solvent. So you need to convert grams to kilograms. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. That means we have 0.150 kilograms of solvent. When you plug that into the formula, your molality is 0.342 molal. All right, so I alluded to this earlier, and I want to go over it in detail. This is a possible short essay free response on a test. How do you prepare a molar solution? It's really important. Um, if I did ask you this, I would expect you to know the name of the equipment. So you would need a volumetric flask. You would need distilled water. You would need a balance to weigh out. And so the first step one would be weigh out however many grams of the solute you need. If you're given moles in the problem, you'd have to convert it to grams because you can't weigh moles. Add it to a volumetric flask. Step two. Add water until the solute is completely dissolved because it is going to take up some volume. And when it's all dissolved, you want to add water until the bottom of the meniscus reaches or touches on the etched line. And then mix it real well. All right, so here's a little bit more practice for you. Um, this is a how you would prepare. So you definitely want to pause the video and see if you could go through this on your own. Um, just a reminder, you're going to need to do a calculation first because you need to be able to tell the chemist how much solute they need to mass out. Okay, so how much ammonium carbonate does the chemist need to mass out? So you need to calculate that first. And then you need to give a stepwise, step one, step two, step three procedure for actually making that solution. And the answer will be on the next page. As I said before, this type of problem is two steps. One involves a calculation. And one involves a description, a stepwise procedure. So if you calculated that you would need 24 grams of ammonium carbonate, that's awesome. That's worth half credit. How did we get that? Well, 
I like to look at the formula for doing these calculations. Molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. And so pretty much all of the problems you will do on molarity will give you two out of the three values. So either molarity or moles or liters. And your job is to find the third one. So let's look at what this problem gives us. It gives us that there are 500 milliliters of the solution. So it's basically given us the liters of solution. We have that. What else has it given us? It's given us the actual molarity value. So it's given us this. Okay. So what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for the value we don't have, which is moles of solute. Okay. So some people who are not friendly with algebra like to think of this as a triangular problem. And if you re to help you, if this if this helps you, if this triangle helps you, basically if you haven't used one before, it's when you have three variables in an equation, and whatever variable you're trying to solve for, you cover up. And so, let's see, they give us liters, so I'm going to circle that. This problem gives us liters, and they give us molarity. So we're trying to solve for moles. And this triangle tells you how to do it. So if you cover up the moles part on top, whatever you're trying to solve for, you cover up. That means you do the operation that's left, which is molarity times liter. If you're comfortable with algebra, then you need, obviously, all you would do is rearrange this equation to solve for moles. And that would be moles equals molarity times liters of solution. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do that operation. Moles equals molarities times liters. Here's molarity, 0.5, which was given to us in the problem, times liters which was given us two in the problem. Cancel your units as you can. That tells us that we need 0.25 moles of ammonium carbonate. Chemists cannot weigh out moles, so you always need to convert moles into grams. So if we have 0.25 moles of ammonium carbonate, in order to get to grams, we need to know the molar mass of ammonium carbonate. So get refamiliarized with finding molar masses. Make sure that you use masses off the periodic table to at least two decimal points to the right of the decimal. Okay, otherwise it's not precise enough. So look in your periodic table. Okay, you've got two nitrogen, eight hydrogen, a carbon, and three oxygen. Okay, add those all together. You should get a molar mass of 96.09. And that will give you the grams of ammonium carbonate. Again, that is half this problem because the problem says tell how you would prepare. So there's your calculation. Your description is what I went over earlier. Step one is always mass out however many grams of the solute. Make sure you use it in a volumetric flask. And the size of volumetric flask you should use should equal the total volume of solution wanted. Add distilled water roughly to the halfway point, dissolve all of the solute, and then add enough distilled water until the bottom of the meniscus lies on the etched line. Here's another problem. We're, this one is a percent by mass. Okay. First thing you want to do is write out the formula and decide what information you have and what you need. So percent by mass is equal to the mass of the solute, which is sodium hydroxide in this problem, over the total mass of the solution times 100. So what information do we have? Well, we know that the percent value is 14. We're trying to find the grams or the mass of sodium hydroxide. That's what we're trying to find. 
the total mass of the solution that we would like is 75 grams. And then don't forget the 100. Okay? So as always, you've got all variables needed, and there's usually just one left out, and that's the one you need to solve for. So you really need to get comfortable with rearranging this formula so that you can solve for the different variables, in this case, mass of the solute. And if you want to pause and try it yourself, and the answer's on the next page. All right, so here's the equation that I just drew, okay? And the first thing I do when I'm working out a percent by mass problem is I get rid of the 100. Um, so you want to divide both sides by 100. Okay, so that gives you that 0 0.140 equals the mass of solute over 75 grams. Now multiplying both sides by 75 grams gives you with the following. And so that means that if you wanted to prepare 75 grams of a 14% solution of sodium hydroxide, you would need 10.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now the problems get a little trickier, but I just want to give you a flavor for how they're going to get ramped up and try to encourage you to work a bunch of problems. Remember that the, um, your textbook, the end of your textbook, has all sorts of sample problems, too, as well as, like I said, I'll load some um, into the content folder called in-class problem solving. But anyway, um, it's important that you know how to convert from one unit of concentration to another. So in this problem is asking you to convert from a percent to molality and molarity. The hint I want to give you, and then I really want you to try it on your own, is remember what percent is. So we are trying to go from 0.0. Okay, so a generic way to write that is 3 grams of H2O2 over 100 grams of, remember it's total solution, so it would be water and hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide times 100. Okay, you're trying to go from that to molality, which is moles of H2O2. That shouldn't be too hard, right? Because you're going from grams of H2O2 to moles. You should be able to do that. On these conversion problems, you typically have to do treat the numerator as one entire problem and then the denominator as a completely separate problem. Denominator of molality is kilograms of solvent, which is H2O, okay, it's going to take some thought, um, and then molarity, so moles of H2O2, should already have that from the first problem, divided by liters of total solution, so that'd be liters of H2O and H2O2, okay, do what you can on those first by putting this on pause, and then I'll have the answers for you. So most of the time when you're working out conversion from one concentration unit to another, you have to make some assumptions, especially if you're working by mass. Go ahead and just make the assumption, in this case we have a 3% solution, that you have 3 grams of solute in 100 grams of solution. Okay, That will allow you to actually have numbers to do calculations with. So, then after making that assumption, so in this case, 3 grams, or when I first worked this out, I guess I converted that to um, out of 1 gram. As long as the ratio is the same, it's still 3%. So I divided both these by 100, so it'd be you would have 0.03 grams of solute in 1 gram of solution. Um, so once you have a gram amount that you've made an assumption with, you can convert that to moles by dividing by the molar mass of hydrogen peroxide. And there you have moles of hydrogen peroxide, and that you need moles for molality and molarity. So now the tricky part is getting the denominator of these. 
Um, for molality, the denominator is kilograms of solvent only, which is going to require some thought because you have the mass of the entire solution, which is solvent and solute. How do you separate that out? It means you have to take the denominator from percent and break it down into what part of it is due to the, the solute, which is hydrogen peroxide, and what part is due to the solvent. So the grams of total solution, I'm running out of room here, is solvent plus solute, right? You know the grams of the entire solution. In this case, we're going to say one gram, okay? You use this assumption up here. Um, and we just calculated, or we know from the numerator, the grams of solute, which is 0 0.030 grams. So you can then calculate the grams of solvent. Okay, this is cramped. So grams of solvent in this case is simply the one gram of the entire solution we have from up here subtracted from the grams of the solute that we have, which is 0 0.03. That means that the grams of solvent are 0.97. And if you remember the, the equation for molal molality, the denominator is in kilograms, not grams. So you need to convert grams that you get to kilograms. And when you do all of that, okay, you get that the molality is moles of um, solute over kilograms of solvent, 0.91 molal, little m. I don't be concerned if you're confused by this whole thing. Um, consider this an introduction, start working problems, and if you don't get it right now, you will, I promise. All right, so now we still have to convert that percent by mass value to molarity, okay, which is moles of solute, which we already have from the last calculation, yay over liters of entire solution. All right, moles of solute we already calculated, okay? We're, remember that we're assuming uh, we have a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide, which we're gonna say means three grams of hydrogen peroxide per 100 grams of water times 100 which simply means that the ratio of hydrogen peroxide to solution is 3 over 100 or 0.03 over 1, which is what I used when working this out. All right, so using that, again, we get the moles of hydrogen peroxide, and that's our numerator. Now we have to get liters of the entire solution. This is an important point to listen to because this otherwise will mess you up later. In order to get from grams of something to milliliters or liters of something, you need to know the density. The density will convert from grams to milliliters or vice versa. The density of pure water, if you don't remember, is one. That means one gram of water is exactly equal to one milliliter of water. So most dilute aqueous solutions will have a density very closely to one. I should have added this in the problem, and I didn't, but I had wanted you to assume that this dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide has a density of one. So what that means is that the one gram of solution that you have here since the density is exactly one, one gram equals exactly one milliliter of solution. One milliliter of solution is 0 0.001 liters, and now we have all of the information we need to calculate molarity, which ends up being 0 0.882. Here's your chance, and I cannot emphasize enough the importance of trying to do this on your own. 
So I would get a piece of paper, a pencil, um, write all the equations out that you need to know, go back and listen to the problem I just worked out if you want, or refer to your textbook if you want, but please try to do this on your own, okay? That's really important. And then on the next page, I will show it worked out for you. I actually just want to write down the formulas for you. This has you starting with percent by mass, and so what do we know? If something is 7.5%, that means there are 7.5 grams of the solute. And unless you're told otherwise, you can assume the solvent is water. Okay, and 100 grams of, this is wine, so that's the alcohol, the 100 grams is alcohol and water added together. Okay, so basically the ratio that you're dealing with, the assumption you're making for all of the rest of your calculations is based on this ratio. And you're trying to get molality, which is moles of the ethanol over kilograms of water and what else so mole fraction a little bit different so mole fraction is moles of the solute which is ethanol over total moles so that means the denominator would be moles of ethanol plus moles of water. Okay, good luck. Here are the answers. If you got them, hooray, that's awesome. If not, check out, try to figure out what you did wrong. Um, I'm going to add in a couple pages where I show the work, so you can skip the next two pages if you got the right answer, or if not, you can listen to them. All right, so I'm going to try to find molality first. So this would be part A of that question. And since it's 7.5% solution of ethanol, I'm going to assume that I have 7.5 grams of ethanol and 100 grams of solution. The problem is nice enough to give you the molar mass of ethanol. So here are my moles of ethanol. So for molality, as well as for mole fraction, what I need in the numerator are the moles of ethanol. So that was an easy one. Now for molality, I need kilograms of the solvent, which is water. Well, what do I know? I know that the grams of the total solution is 100. That's based on my assumption that 7.5 grams of ethanol and 100 grams of total solution, okay? And that that 100 grams equal grams of ethanol plus grams of water. Oops. All right. Uh, but I know grams of ethanol. So that works out. It is 7.5. So I can figure out grams of water. Yay. So 100 minus 7.5 is 92.5 grams of water. I'm all set. Molality, however, wants kilograms, so how do I get from grams to kilograms? Move the decimal over three places or divide by a thousand. It's 0 0.0925 kilograms. Okay, there we go. So molarity is 0.16 moles of ethanol divided by 0 0.0925 kilograms of water. And that's 1.7 molal. We say 1.7 molal. That's off a bit. I just looked back at the answer, and the answer said 1.76. So I made a little math error someplace. I'm not going to worry about it now because that is the correct procedure. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate mole fraction for you on the next page. So... I'm going to calculate mole fraction now. So just to remind you, the equation for mole fraction is moles of the solute on top and total moles on the bottom. 
I already know moles of ethanol from part A of this problem. And that is 0.163. And moles of ethanol. I'm just repeating it in the bottom. Now I need to know moles of water. Hmm, I don't have moles of water, but I just figured out grams of water from the last, um, the last problem, part A. And the grams of water, let's see, since the grams of ethanol is 7.5, the grams of water is 100 minus that. So 92.5 grams of water. And if I want to get moles of water from that, I'm going to divide by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole. Grams cancel, so I have moles. And if I punch that into my calculator real quick, I get 5.13 moles of water. And let me go to the next page. So now I have my mole fraction. There are 0.163 moles of the solute ethanol. And the total moles then is that 0.163 added to the moles of water, which we just calculated is 5.13. Um, now, of course, the moles of your solvent is always going to be much more than the moles of solute. And so now, what is our mole fraction? It is, let me plug that in real quick. So that gives us 0.163 over 5.30. All right, so our mole fraction in this case is 0 0.031. Remember, it's unitless. The units are the same in the top and bottom, so 0 0.031 is the mole fraction. So I really should have introduced density a few slides ago because you do need it to convert from some concentration units to others, but better late than never, huh? So as a reminder, if you're fuzzy on it at all, you definitely want to make a note of it. Density is mass per volume. Typically, the most common units for us are grams per milliliter. That allows you to convert from units of volume to units of mass or vice versa. So, the densities that you're given of an aqueous solution are almost always really close to one, which is the density of water, because there's not very much solute so the density is really not going to be affected that much. But here's an example of the um, type of density you'll get for an aqueous solution, just barely over or under one. So we have a 12% sulfuric acid solution, and they're asking for molarity. So again, another chance for very good practice. See if you can work it out yourself first. Working this problem out, since it's 12%, hopefully you're comfortable with doing this. That means we can make the assumption 12 grams of the solute and 100 grams of the total solution. So remember the total solution is the H2SO4 solute plus the water as a solvent. We already know how much of that 100 grams is due to the solute, so we can figure out how much is due to the water. 100 minus the 12, and that gives us how many grams of water. That's a handy thing to do right away because chances are if you're doing unit conversions, you're going to need that value. Remind yourself of the formula for molarity, which is what we're trying to convert to. Um, it's easy for us to get moles of the solute. We just take that 12 grams, divide it by the molar mass of sulfuric acid. Bingo, we have moles. Um, liters of the entire solution, which is what the denominator is for molarity. Okay. This is where you really need to pay attention. You, what do we have? We made the assumption that we have 100 grams of solution. 
If we're going to do a molarity solution, we need not grams of solution, but liters or volume of solution. How do we convert from grams, which is mass, to liters, which is volume? We use the density, okay? So we have 100 grams of solution. We use the density as a conversion factor. They said density is 1.080. That means there are 1.080 grams of the solute of the solution in one milliliter of the solution. Grams cancels. The math here is 100 divided by 1.080. That tells you that 100 grams of solution is equal to 92.6 milliliters, okay? Because molarity uses liters in the denominator, not milliliters, we have to convert the 92.6 to liters. And here we go. We calculated moles of H2SO4 to get molarity divided by the liters of solution after doing the density calculation. And here we go. Molarity of the solution is 0.132. That is it for this second lecture. There's one more in Chapter 12, and that's on colligative properties. It's really working with molality in depth. So now it's time to work problems, and I can't emphasize enough that's the key to success. Work as many problems as you possibly can. Um, molarity, molality, percent by mass and mole fraction, um, in addition to doing unit conversions also. Um, and when you're ready, go ahead and try to take the test and, or the quiz, the practice quiz in learning catalytics.